The 1962 Pontiac Catalina Custom by AMT Ertl. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Welcome back again, Monster Hobbies Model Kit fans. Welcome to another What's in the Box. And as promised from last week, this week we get to take a look at a very glary boxed version of the 1962 Pontiac Catalina Custom. Now I know Round 2 has re-released the 1962 Pontiac as a two-in-one kit, but this is from the old glory days under RC2 when this week's car and last week's car were two separate model kits. So we're going to review them as two separate videos, which you will find to be very cool. But before we do that, don't forget again to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Click that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you are the first one to see it. And let's get this great video up to 100 likes so that it gets really high up there in the Google search engines. That would be really cool so that every time somebody wants to see one of these models, they get to see my channel first. So without further ado, let's go down to the table and open up the lid on this great model. Now we wind the clock back to 1962 and we check out our 62 Pontiac Catalina Custom. Now this kit again came out in the late 90s. This is sort of a lowrider edition. Uh, what's cool about this is it has a lot of the custom tricks in it that were very popular in 62 to the early 70s with the lowrider craze. So if you're into vintage lowriders, this is a great kit for you. I mean, look, you can see some tuck and roll in here. And of course the motor's pink, but that lowered stance is pretty cool too. So the box, the top and the sides are the same. Now, this is a skill level two kit for ages 10 and up, requires glue and paint. Made in 2002 by RC Ertl. But again, sister car to last week's 1962 Pontiac Catalina 421 Super Duty. And I do believe that if you find this kit now, because there has been some re-releases from round two, you will find that it is combined the custom with the Super Duty. So now let's just peel the top of the box lid off. And before we get into all the parts here, we're going to check out the instruction sheet. So I'll just move this off to the side. And we'll zoom out. And we'll open this up. So again, there's no write-up about the Pontiac Catalina in here, but there is the paint call-out sheet here so that, you know, a color like gloss black coincides with the letter A. And you will find all the letters all throughout. So it says here, before you begin, this is a custom version. Paint colors shown are reference from OEM, Original Equipment Manufacturing Specifications. You may choose your own custom paint scheme. Thank you very much. Use box cover for reference when painting. Okay, so there we've got our engine block again. The separate cylinder heads with valves on the top for you to cover up with your valve covers. And then it's just like the Super Duty, it has the two four barrel carburetors and the performance block, which is a factory motor. Then we get into our dashboard here, and it's saying to paint those numbers on there, so you'll need a number 5 over 0 brush or something small like that. And of course, your steering wheel and your dashboard. Now, where the difference is in here are the seats, which have the really neat tuck and roll pattern, or the pleated pattern. Yeah, it's pleated. Pleated pattern. And of course, the interior is not a tub like in some of the model kits from the 70s and whatnot, but it is separately molded parts, built by a very good AMT Ertl team. The undercarriage, of course, is like the Pontiac Super Duty. There actually is no difference. So it's got the separate frames, the exhaust, the motor, the radiator with the radiator shroud separate, which is nice. The undercarriage, of course, is the same, and you can always cut off your drive sh uh, linkages to make new linkages for those spindles and make them turn left and right. Just Google that up. It's got to be out there. So now here's the wheels, and they've got a custom hub cap, beauty ring, 
and of course your wheels. Now these are different from last week's Super Duty because they do not include those big drag slicks, but that's okay. So here it shows the wheels gluing on, and it's got lake pipes. You can hear the lake pipes roar. Anyway, it's got the glass, and uh, then the grill is different from the Pontiac Super Duty because it's got bars in there and the old Lucas lights for, some, for quad headlights. And of course, the rear bumper going on, like factory stuff. So now let's close up our instructions and go review the parts in further detail. All right, so we're gonna begin with the Pontiac body here again, just like we did last week. And as you can tell, it is the same car from last week. The only difference is this is a kit that hasn't been opened and worked on. So you can see right here across the hood, they have the bar that says remove. So this was to help in the plastic molding process to give more heat and plastic distribution into these front fenders to make them as nice as they are. Again, like last week, you can see the Pontiac logo on the back, just under the trunk lid. And nice detail in here with the gas filler door on the driver's side. Now one thing I didn't show last time was underneath in the hood, you've got the nice detail under there with your sun visors and of course your dome light. Now there are a lot of these mold buttons. Some of them are depressed and others are raised up. You will have to get rid of these with your number 16 exacto knife. So now speaking of untempered, tampered with stuff, here's the hood with that attachment for your uh, sprue at the top. There are some nice ribs underneath here. And there's those buttons again to get rid of with your number 16 hobby knife. The holes for the hood springs as well. So that's our body. Now let's check underneath. Next up, we have the frame for the car. And as you can tell, it is still on this big piece of screw. So you have to saw it off with your hobby blade up top and carefully saw down here with the saw. And again, like last week, we need to take our number 16 hobby blade and get rid of the mold marks underneath here. But all in all, it is a really nice, solid looking frame. And our final car detail piece for the body is the chassis here with this very nice gas tank. And of course, look at all the ribs and detail in there. Just like the real thing, only smaller. Now these holes are for the frame. These are for your shock absorbers and exhaust pipes as well. And of course, we get into the interior here with the carpet and our uh, floor mats. That's what they are. A little spot for the gear shifter as well. And look at the nice wires and detail on these inner fender skirts. Now what makes this car different from the stock Pontiac Catalina 421 are these nice custom pleated seats. And as you can tell, there's a lot of detail on those. And to match them off, we also have these nice pleated interior panels, left and right hand side. Here, I'll just move this one out of the way. But like, look at how crisp that is. And it was molded flat in the mold like that. So you do have some rib detail back in here just to strengthen it up. But the window wiper, uh, winders, and the door release mechanism, the handles are really nice on there, as well as you get that nice front vent for your air. The next components we have are the radiator hoses, the springs, the upper A arms for your suspension, the disc or the drum brakes, and these retainers for your front spindles. Now let's just have a look at the brakes. You can see some really nice detail on there for uh, where your spindles go and everything else. Now this part should look familiar if you remember our video from last week. There we've got our dashboard with the knobs and details in there, as well as the parking brake, the clutch, the rear or the brake, and the gas pedal. And there we've got our radiator, and here's our radiator 
shroud. Uh, there's our engine block, our cylinder heads, our exhaust pipes, our four barrel carburetor intake manifold, the dashboard, or the firewall, pardon me. And then we've got our two four barrel carburetors, our fan belt pulley, or pulley or fan, <laughs> starter motor, oil pan, fuel lines, and engine cover. Now here we have the sprue with our exhaust pipes. And these ones hook up from the second second part of the muffler, so these are the back ones. Bent down at, at the back here for the exhaust to get out. Now this is where the custom components are here that are not in the regular Pontiac 421. This is the grill insert for the custom. And this here is a blank nose for the center. And our chrome grill is going to go behind that. Then we have these shock absorbers with the springy kind of detail. The battery, it has the clamp to hold it down in the car as well as your positive and negative lead. This is for your brakes, the brake master cylinder. Um, not too sure. Oh, that's your steering gear, steering gearbox. And then here is your column shifter. Next up we have our lower A arms and the engine is going to mount here. There's our uh, valve covers, the drive shaft, the rear differential, and here's the front of the differential cover. And if we turn that over, you can see all the nice ribs that are in there. So again, highly detailed, excellent model. Next up, we have our exhaust pipes. These come from the manifold and then go out to our mufflers, which would be halfway through the car. And then here's some of the traction bars for the rear differential, the springs, the front spindles, and I'm not sure what 71 and 72 are. And last but not least are the two springs that hold our hood up, and there's the pins where they would mount underneath the hood. Now we get into our chrome components, and if you saw last week's video, you will note some differences here that are pretty key. Actually, this is a completely new chrome tree. The front and rear bumper are the same, they're stock. But now we've got this nice grill in here. These sort of uh, 1958 Chevy style headlights. These are for the Lucas lights because they've got the extended pins in there. Chrome valve covers. This part is the same as the other car. You've got the chrome horn ring, the mirror, whatever these are, <laughs> your shift lever and your two chrome air cleaners. And then here we have stock wheels that have been chrome plated and of course our lake pipes. So let's just take a quick look at these chrome wheels. So that's how they look. Next up we have a really nice set of tires here with separate white wall inserts. These are new. These are BF Goodrich tires. I don't know if I can get in there too well with the camera. There's a nice zigzag type tread pattern on there. Don't know how well you can see it. And of course this is the back side. You could leave them black wall. Put the white walls on the inside, I'm not too sure. But as you can see there's a ridge in here and that's where these would push in and clip. So you end up with a pretty nice white wall tire. Next up we have our red tail lamps. And uh, I don't know if you can see this too well, but these ones are like C-shaped and they're, they've got a ridge on them. These are the stock Pontiac taillights. These ones are flat and they've got a little dot there. These are the custom Pontiac taillights. And usually the dot would be painted blue so that when the lights shone, it looked like they were purple. And the last piece of plastic we have in the kit are the clear parts. There's your rear window and it is sunken in so when you push this into the body it will come flush with the um, rubber molding around the windows. Same with the front windshield. And I think when they took this out of the mold it was still hot so push this around. But here's your four Lucas headlights for the custom and four stock headlights. And then of course you got the clear plastic steering wheel again which you would paint the insides here but leave the outer ring clear. Finally, our decal sheet consists of just three sets of license plates. 
The first is a California 62 cat. The second is New Jersey Custom 62. And finally, Texas Low Ride. And that concludes our review of the AMT Ertl 1962 Pontiac Catalina Custom. Well, I hope you enjoyed that awesome review of the 1962 Pontiac Catalina Custom. Another one of these model kits out of my own collection, which I'm going to keep. But I want you to find the new ones out there. Maybe I'll even bring them into the store and sell. Who knows? Time will tell. Speaking of time, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family so that it will be up on YouTube all the time. <laughs> Now let's get this video up to 100 likes so it reaches really high in the Google search engines in the future so that everybody that wants to see this great model can, of course, see it. And until next time, happy driving out there.